Hey, welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, everyone. It is Monday, and it has turned out to be a mild day. It's turned out to be kind of a damp day, but boy, was it a great start this morning. If you were lucky enough to be up around 7.30 this morning, you witnessed a fantastic sunrise, and we've gotten tons of fantastic pictures from our viewers uh, sent to us at the uh, weatherpicks at wfmj.com email account and also posted on the uh, Storm Tracker Facebook page. Uh, some of these pictures, fantastic, and this really doesn't do it justice. The quality is not quite as great in my picture viewer here. Uh, this is from Donna down in Guilford Lake. She's always sending us great pictures. Some of her pictures are, are wallpaper material, that's for sure, and this is, is no exception. Some really great purples and pinks in the sky from Guilford Lake this morning, and then this afternoon we got this one from uh, Becky in uh, Evans Lake. Uh, another just beautiful shot of the uh, start of the day today. Uh, what makes these sunrises great, uh, you need uh, a certain kind of cloud right at sunrise. A lot of times it's kind of these high uh, alto stratus type clouds. Uh, some other types of clouds can make nice, nice sunrises and sunsets as well. And so we had the right recipe uh, this morning for uh, some fantastic viewing out there. So this is, you know, this is basic meteorology. This is uh, not uh, any sort of human influence creating these sunrises and sunsets. Don't believe any of the uh, nonsense <laughs> conspiracy theories that you might occasionally see out there when something cool is happening in the sky. It's all just nature. It's all just basic meteorology. Uh, you don't even need a four-year weather degree like I have to know that uh, this is something that has occurred forever and ever. So we'll continue to enjoy great sunrises and great sunsets here in the Mahoning Valley. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. Here's a look at the... Uh, Temperature anomaly so far this month. Today's the 13th. We're almost halfway through the month. And no surprise, it's been colder than average when you add it all up, uh, pretty much from the plains on east. Although these colors have definitely changed a bit over the last few days as some milder air has come into the pattern. Our temperature departures from average aren't quite as severe overall for the month as they were just a handful of days ago. Of course, it was just a week ago that we were dealing with the coldest air coming down out of uh, Canada that we've seen in, in 20 years. Nothing like that coming anytime soon. It's been warm and way too dry out west. Very serious drought situation in California where it's supposed to be the rainy season here in the middle of winter. They should be getting some rain occasionally. The uh, snow should be piling up in the mountains. It's just not happening this year, and that's going to lead to big-time trouble for them in the, uh, in the warm weather season coming up. All right, back to our local weather. Here's our radar as I record this at about 2.15 this afternoon. Uh, we've got warm temperatures compared to average, and we got some light rain pushing in from the south. I'll put the radar in motion here so you can kind of see how things are, are progressing. This is generally pushing in from the south and from the west, and uh, we can expect this kind of off and on, I think, right into the night tonight. But again, temperatures at this hour are 49 in Youngstown and similar numbers throughout northeast Ohio and into western PA. I'll give you a quick tour of the rest of the country. There's not much going on precipitation-wise. And temperature-wise, again, the pattern is not being flooded by harsh Arctic air right now. It's all bottled up up in northern Canada. Now, some of that's going to come south as we head towards the weekend. Notice Alaska is very cold right now, and when Alaska's cold, typically we are not. When Alaska's warm, typically we are cold across the northeastern quadrant of the mainland U.S. But there's a minus 50 up there in Yukon in Alaska. All right, let's talk about the future and what we can expect as far as the rain goes. I'll bring up our simulated radar. We'll start this with, uh, let's start with 7 o'clock this evening. Zoom back in here. And as you can see, we're going to be dealing with more rain in northeast Ohio and western PA. Nothing real heavy. Uh, you can expect to, you know, probably a quarter of an inch or so out of this overall. Uh, fast forward to 11 o'clock tonight. Again, some light rain, some drizzle around as we head towards the midnight hour. And then here we are at uh, 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. And this is when the back edge should be pushing through. Uh, a lot of the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys. This is wee hours of tomorrow morning at about 3 o'clock. Now, as most people get up and around on Tuesday morning, here's 8 a.m., notice we're drying out. So uh, we should be in okay shape for tomorrow morning. It's going to be breezy. It's going to be chilly. Out here is our next weather maker. This is what the radar should look like tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Uh, system heading towards Chicago. And as I take a look at tomorrow afternoon, here's the middle of tomorrow afternoon. Notice that precipitation is pushing into Ohio. And towards the very end of the day tomorrow, here's 7 p.m. on Tuesday, uh, the threat for uh, some precipitation increasing again in northeast Ohio and western PA. Well, this precipitation for tomorrow evening into tomorrow night, there may be a little rain at the beginning, but a lot of this will be uh, snow shower activity. It's really not going to add up to much uh, this time around, though. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of our uh, forecast. Here's tomorrow night's system pivoting through. Got an area of low pressure tomorrow night over Detroit with a front moving through. And this is the front that's going to usher in some pretty chilly air for the rest of the week. 
Here's the map for Wednesday afternoon, and a lot of clouds around this day, maybe some flurries here and there as well. And you'll notice a theme here as I roll forward on our computer model here towards the weekend. You're not going to see any big storms uh, moving our way anytime soon. Here's Thursday afternoon. Notice there's another system coming through the Great Lakes, another area of low pressure right here. A little green here. That means there'll be some scattered flurries or snow showers. Maybe there's some dustings with each one of these little systems. Here's another one on Friday. Another little area of light snow probably pivoting through that might dust the ground, might give someone an inch at most. And then even on Saturday, we could see some flurries at the start of the day. It looks pretty cold over the weekend. Maybe a Saturday night, we get another one of these little little crop dusters coming through that uh, you know doesn't look very strong. And uh, you know, when you add up all the snow that we're going to get between now and uh, uh, late next Sunday evening, there's not much on this map. Several little systems coming through, each one with little touch of snow, but when you add it all up, probably under two inches in total, according to the GFS model. European model has a little more. It has a grand total of, uh, of three inches between now and next, uh, uh, let's say this is next uh, Sunday evening. So over the next six, seven days, a total of three if, if, if we're lucky. So bottom line is we're not going to see much sun over the next seven days, but we're not going to see much snow either. We're going to see some mood snow flying around occasionally, but this is really nothing to, uh, to write home about. So we should have a pretty decent January week, all things considered. We're heading into the heart of winter, the heart of January, and uh, no big blockbusters on our weather maps today. All right, thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this uh, Monday. You can catch my forecast tonight on the TV side, 21 News at both 6 and 11. Early risers, as always, tune in to WFMJ today for Jess's updated forecast.